I, I mentioned Hong Kong at the outset. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that, uh, so, I mean, first of all, I think that the the sort of the, the quieter period we've seen uh, on, on this, uh, amongst this, you know, whatever it's been now, however long it's been, these very uh, dramatic protests, I think that's, uh, you know, don't don't think that the protests are over. Uh, yeah. You know, COVID nineteen might put a lid on them for a while, but the the issues and and the tensions between uh, people in Hong Kong and the society there in the mainland has absolutely not gone away. Mm-hmm. And the moment that uh, uh, the people in Hong Kong feel that it's safe to go out in large crowds and protest, they're going to be doing it again. Mm-hmm. And so this is a huge unresolved issue. For China, yeah. and frankly, under the present leadership in China, if anything, it's become a much, much more serious problem because mm. they have been the leadership in China has been unwilling to even go halfway in trying to uh, meet some of these semi-independent uh, demands that people in Hong Kong might have, and they're not. They didn't necessarily want independence. They just right. wanted to have. They wanted to, so, some barriers between their system and the mainland. If anything, those barriers have been badly. You know, they've been taken away. They've been badly eroded in recent years. And I blame, you know, I think the Chinese leadership, uh, I think it was a, a, a real a real mistake on their part. They have mm-hmm. intensified the the fissures that are that the Hong Kong people feel with uh, the mainland. If you look at, there's been interesting surveys looking at the degree to which Hong Kong people, and particularly young Hong Kong people, mm-hmm. self-identify as Chinese. And those numbers have collapsed. They mm-hmm. don't look at themselves as Chinese anymore. And so I think it's a huge problem. I don't mm-hmm. think it's going to go away. Yeah. I do think, uh, you know, I do think, uh, someone asked me about this earlier in the week. I do think that China, uh, and I say this with some sadness because I, I love Hong Kong and I live there. I, I'm not sure that Hong that China needs it needs Hong Kong because it's sort of the canary in the coal mine on this regression in in opening and reform in China. I think, but I do think that China. It's it's possible that China could. We see what's happening in places like Shanghai. If if China actually decided that it wanted to push forward its long talked about goals of making uh, Shanghai into a more international commercial center, I think that would be a tremendous challenge to Hong Kong. China has mm. huge ports of its own. You know, right across the border in Yen, in Yentian Port in Shenzhen, up the coast in Ningbo, in Shanghai Dalian. So there's a lot of options that China has to, uh, to continue to reform its economy that don't necessarily involve Hong Kong. Mm. But uh, I think it's I think it's I don't I think the problems as as a political problem. I think it's a it's a huge one for the mainland. Mm. Yeah, that's all true. But the one thing that Hong Kong has that Shanghai and none of these other places have is a effectively a dollar denominated economy, right? The Hong Kong dollar yes. is pegged to the US dollar and and there's no quicker way to launder your yuan than, as you know, to <laughs> go and buy some property in Hong Kong, right? So for that reason, I mean, what do you make of that argument that, you know, the, the, the Chinese authorities need this dollar denominated financial hub off of, on its southern coast and, and want to yeah. maintain it for that yeah. reason? Yeah, now there's social distancing, so people can't go launder their money through the casinos in Macau. So uh, that's right. <laughs> uh, yeah. But no, I think you're absolutely right. And for I, I, I was thinking more. I, I was from a personal, the personal standpoint of some very powerful people in China. Yeah, they want Hong Kong. They mm-hmm. all have apartments there, very very expensive apartments, given the real estate market. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of powerful people in China that are in the government that stand to lose personally a lot. If Hong Kong's economy goes south, or if there's, you know, outright you know, there's more outright unrest in the streets of Hong Kong, so it's a very big, it's a very big issue. And as you say, the dollar right now, China is. I mean, I perhaps I exaggerated that. I mean, right now, yeah, Hong Kong plays an important role. The the rule of law that they have there as well, uh, as you say, the dollar-denominated economy, those things are very important to China.